Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington, and today we are going to make a crazy stocking. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. So this is one of my favorite stockings. I love this stocking. I've made it multiple times. It's really fun because since we're putting it onto a foundation piece, you can use all kinds of weird fabrics. If you have some suede, some wool, some leftover things, you can use all of your baubles, buttons, trims, weird stitches on your sewing machine that you've never used. It's really a fun, freeing thing to do. We've done this as a class in the shop multiple times and everybody always has a fantastic fantastic time and nobody's ever looks the same not only within us but even every single time you make it it will look different so anyway you can make it in a variety of colors we've done blue ones and green ones and red ones it doesn't make any difference whatever you like so um, I'm gonna warn you it's paper piecing and that shouldn't be a warning that's actually a really good thing some people want already know how to do paper piecing, which is great. Some people want to know how to do paper piecing. This is one of those really simple, stress-free projects that it's perfect to be able to perfect your little paper piecing technique. So we're gonna do a little bit of sewing near the end of the video, but first let me show you everything you need to get started. Okay, first of all, you're going to need the pattern. So uh, we do have the pattern for you. Um, it is not available as a download just because of the size, but what we have is we have it as a printed pattern available or we have it packaged in kits for you. And we have a light kit or a dark kit, depending upon if you want to make a light stocking or a dark stocking. You can, of course, just do just the pattern and put together your own fabrics. The other thing, though, that we've put in our kit is we have put in the piece of piece of soft and stay. It's something that you're going to need. It looks like this. It's just a Pellon product and all it is is a very lightweight stabilizer. If you've done any of like the collage quilting, you've probably used something like this. I'm going to show you in a minute how you're going to use that. So you need that, the pattern. You do need a Sharpie marker, which I think is a little strange to have around a quilt, but again, think collage quilting. Since we are doing paper piecing, you're going to want an add a quarter ruler. Um, this is just your old classic one, and this is the add a quarter plus. Either one will work perfectly. The other thing you're going to want is a collection of fabrics. You don't probably need anything larger than a seven inch square, and you can see that you can add pieces of minky, pieces of chenille, there might be flannel, silks. Um, there's some Osnaberg in there. Anything strange that just has the color that you'd like, you'd be okay with. This one also has some wool in it. There is, I don't know, all, there's a lot of wool in this one. All kinds of different things. It's not going to make any difference because, again, it's not probably going to be laundered very often. And the other thing is that it's all going to be stabilized, so you don't have to worry about that. The other thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start collecting some weird little bobbly things. So if you have some trims that you think are kind of fun, some iron-ons, some buttons or bells, trims. Again, uh, I can't think of the last time I washed a stocking. You could make it so that it's washable if you're really careful about how you stitch things down, but I'm going to say that it's going to be a whole lot easier for you if you just accept the fact that you don't want to splash any spaghetti sauce on it. And if you are splashing spaghetti sauce on your Christmas stockings, then I want to come to your house. So anyway, um, any weird little things that you can find, I usually just start gathering them together throwing them in somewhere. And I want to show you kind of a fun little trick if you just have some little um, 
uh, clothespins, you can store your leftover little bits pretty easily so it doesn't make such a big mess. All you do is you just clip it and then you wrap it around. And then after you've wrapped it around multiple times, you come back down and you clip the other end. So it's just a nice way to store some of those leftover little bits of trim. All right, and I always end up having way more stuff than I'm ever going to end up using, but it's fun just to have little things that you think you might want to use to decorate. All right, once you've gathered everything together, the first step is going to be tracing your pattern onto your soft and stay. And again, it sort of freaks people out a little bit that we're using a Sharpie marker, but you're not going to see this. This is all the back side back here. So even if you've made some sort of a strange mark, something a little bit weird, um, you're not going to end up seeing any of that. So we'll take this and I'm just gonna really quickly trace my pattern. Okay, so I've traced my pattern and um, these are all going to be sew lines. And again, this is going to stay in, in my piece. So the other thing that I should have mentioned in the beginning is you're also going to need a little piece of batting. So you can use whatever leftover piece of batting you want. I just love the texture. You can always tell when there's a little bit of batting back behind there, it just creates a little bit of loft. So you can use whatever you have left over. This one happens to be just a little piece of cotton that I think would be exactly the right size. This one is a piece of polyester, but what's nice about this one is this one is fusible. So I kind of like that, and my suggestion is that if you are a beginner, you might like the idea of that. And all you're going to do is save your pattern for next time. Take this lay this on top of your batting. I'm gonna go to the iron and I'm gonna gently iron this down. And then I am maybe just going to ever so gently rough cut this out. I'm gonna go do that and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I thought I'd show you this part. So you can see that I've fused this to this and by rough cut, what I mean is I'm just going to give myself some room but take off some of that extra stuff that's just gonna be in my way. So this is what I'm starting with. Now, when you're paper piecing, if you've not paper pieced before, really all you're doing is you are putting the pieces down in order. This is piece number one, piece number two, piece number three, piece number four, and you're sewing on the line that connects those pieces. We're gonna do this together uh, in front of the sewing machine. but. Before we do all of that, usually I like to do a little bit of planning or as I call it, overthinking and think about the pieces that I want to put there. So you can just start with a great big, huge piece if you'd like to, but usually what I do is I just whack off a piece that's going to work. And so what I would do is like, let's say that I want to start with this one. And if you wanted to kind of plan it, if you have something that's directional, you can kind of lay that out so that you have it the way that you want. I tend to not think about that too much because I will inevitably get it upside down. But when you cut your piece, you just want to make sure that you're coming, I would say, at least an inch all the way around. So cut yourself a piece way bigger than what you think you need. And so I'm going to go through, I've decided I'm gonna make a blue one. So I've gathered up a bunch of my leftover Christmas fabrics, and I'm gonna go ahead and really quickly just cut out some pieces and get ready for piecing. 
All right. So I have from my uh, stack of blue leftovers, I've cut up quite a few squares and I'm just kind of laying them out and gathering the rest of my stuff. For this particular stocking, it looks as if I'm pretty much sticking with all cotton, which is fine, which is great. But again, there's an option. If you do find some weird um, pieces left over, you can go ahead and do that. I also feel like this is a good time to start collecting all of my weird little baubles and things that I want. So I have some fun little trims. I have some little iron-on snowflakes that are all laser cut and ready to go. I have some weird things that I found, some weird buttons. One thing I want to mention is that there's most of this we're going to do on the sewing machine, but some of the things that you're hand sewing, as a rule, you want to make sure that you're using a hand quilting thread, which is a little bit thicker and it has a waxed coating so that if you're sewing on um, crystals or beads, something um, that's a little bit um, sharp edged, it's not going to cut your thread. Uh, it, I'm also not opposed to using glue, uh, so that might work for some of these things. So I've just collected the things that I've liked. The one decision I've not yet made is what I want to put on the top, on my cuff. So I might pick something a little bit more subdued, maybe kind of a fun cotton print. I might pick a wool that might be kind of nice, or check this out. We do have, um, we got this for our gnome beards. We're doing a gnome series coming up, I think, mm, certainly before Christmas. But we have two different colors of gnome beards. And look, it's absolutely the right size. It's perfect. That would look fantastic as a little cuff. So eh, we'll decide that when we get a little bit closer. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into a little bowl so I have them close at hand, and I'm going to select a fun color of thread, and we're going to go ahead and move to the sewing machine. Let's talk for one second about threads. This is the only time that we'll talk about it. You'll see that I'll be using different ones. Everybody's sewing machine is different for what it will allow you to use. Since we are doing a bunch of crazy quilt stitches. Let me go ahead and grab this and show you. We're going to be doing stitches like this. All of those strange little things that maybe you've not ever used on your sewing machine before. So whenever you're doing any kind of that sort of a stitch, you're asking your machine to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth multiple times. And so it really needs to be able to have a thread that will work properly for it. Sometimes when we're using cotton threads, they'll shred and they'll break. So I have a collection of different threads that I've used for this type of a technique or machine embroidery that I know will work well on my machine. Everybody's machine is different. So I do have some that are sparkly, um, some that will work really well. Sometimes I just pick a gold that looks gold because I might not be able to find something that's a shiny real gold. Um, this is a thread that's absolutely gorgeous. My machine will not sew this. I have to do this by hand or I have to couch it. So go through your threads, do a couple little tests and make sure that things will work well. My best advice when you're doing a lot of crazy quilt stitches is to use a polyester thread because it's something that can really take all of that pulling and tugging and stretching while you're doing all of those stitches. Okay, I have my sewing machine all set up. I have my pattern here, my first two pieces of cotton. My foot, let's just talk about this for a second. The foot that you're going to want to use probably is your open-toed applique foot. And by that, I mean, see that great big opening there? We're gonna be doing a lot of strange stitches so you don't want um, a quarter inch foot or a single hold foot. The other thing I have is kind of an assortment of some of the little things that I've gathered, some of the threads that I'll change. And the other thing, it's really easier for me to turn around and use my my cutting mat and my rotary cutter behind me. But just so that you guys can see what I'm doing, I've brought a small one here to the machine. And that's where I'm going to be cutting. So 
Let's talk about paper piecing for just a second. What actually happens is again, this is our pattern. We're sewing here. Everything else is happening behind the scenes. So what's happening is we've got wrong sides together and we're sewing on that line. So what I'm gonna do is this is my first piece. I'm gonna put this right here and I'm just going to pin it into place. You can also glue it into place if you want with a little bit of fabric glue, but so piece number one is down. I'm just gonna double check and make sure that I've covered everything. Oh, oops, I did not. I'm going to slide it over. And I can actually see through. That's why we use that fabric marker. You guys probably can't see it in the camera. I should have just double checked that. So we're all good. Okay, piece number one is in place. Now it's time to put on piece number two. To put on piece number two, I'm going to sew this line that will connect piece number one to piece number two. So what I'm gonna do is get ready by taking my add a quarter ruler. I'm gonna put it right on that line fold it over, pull my ruler out, and see that little lip right there? I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lip, and that's a quarter of an inch. So I'm now going to lock that right into place. And cut off that excess fabric. Because now what happens is I am a quarter of an inch past what I'm going to sew. So now I kind of wanted Santa to be in that shot there a little bit. And so I'm actually going to cheat by, I should have done this ahead of time. Cut that off so I see him. All right. So now what I'm going to do is line this up right on that edge. Let me get that out of the way so you can see. So see where I'm at? I have everything lined up together. And once I see that everything is lined up together, I'm gonna to go ahead and open this up so that I can sew right on this line. Okay, so I'm gonna sew right on this line. And what's gonna happen is I'm going to start stitching about two stitches in front of the line so right on that line and end up about two stitches past that line. And then going to press this open. I can take out that pin now. So now I have piece number one and I have piece number two. I'm just gonna finger press that open. I'm gonna flip it over. And now it's time for me to add piece number three. I'm going to sew on that line that connects piece number two to piece number three. I'm gonna take my add a quarter ruler, I have my little lip, I'm gonna put it right on that line I'm gonna sew. Flip this over. Pull that out. Add the lip so that I've added a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna cut that off. 
And now I'm going to find the next piece that I want to sew on. I'm just going to grab one. I'm going to grab this one. Line that up so that I can see my edges match. Once those edges match, now I'm going to open this whole thing up and I'm going to sew right on that line. I'm going to start about two stitches in front of it and sew to about two stitches past. Flip it over, finger press it, there's piece number three. Now it's time to sew on piece number four. I'm going to flip it over, doggone it, I cut off their heads. We'll see what happens here. Piece number four, so I have piece number one, two, and three. It's time to sew on piece number four. This is the line I'm going to use to sew that. So I'm going to do the same thing. However, before I do that, this is how we would continue to paper piece each time is we're just going to put our little add a quarter ruler on there, fold that over, pull it out, add it, cut it, and just keep piecing. But since we're doing crazy quilt stitches, if you look at this, Let's use this one. You can see that all of these little stitches that I did, this stitch kind of ended underneath that one. This stitch ended underneath there. All of these stitches I did once at, one at a time so I didn't have to end something in some sort of a funny mashy little mess right there. So that's actually what I'm going to do is before I go any farther, I'm going to go ahead and do some fun, crazy quilt stitches here and here. So I'm going to do that, make a couple decisions, maybe make a couple thread changes, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not sure how much of that you're actually able to see with the threads there, but sometimes what will happen is you could actually choose a thread that's far darker. Or the other thing that I'll do is sometimes I'll just come back along and add something else to it. Or like in this case, you can see I did some stitching and then I went back in and I added French knots to it. So you can add any mixture of hand stitching trim stitching, machine stitching that you'd like. But it is kind of nice that as you go along, you just go to add those things so that you have a finished edge. So now I'm going to sew on piece number four. So piece number four. 
And sometimes what will happen is you'll end up with stitches that are sort of in the way there. And again, when you're stitching, I'm going to start a couple of stitches in front. Oh, oh. In a straight stitch. Piece number one, two, three, four. Time for piece number five. Piece number five. And if you notice, I may or may not stitch on the line. Uh, normally I try to, but if my line is a little bit wiggly, I didn't care so much when I traced that because I knew that I would go ahead and fix that when I was sewing it. All right, piece number five. The line that I have to sew piece number five on is right there. So I'm going to put this right on the line, fold that over, pull it out. Add my quarter inch. off and then I'll go ahead and line up my piece and I'll sew that on. I'm going to go ahead and keep working my way up. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple other fun stitches as I'm going. I'll let you see my progress as we go but we'll go ahead and get to the end so you can see how to finish it. Okay so all of the stitches all of the pieces have been sewn on. Quite a few of these fun stitches were put on. I think we did just about every one. We did some top stitching of some little trims. Um, I did put, I ironed on a little snowflake. We have a bunch more stuff that we'll still end up doing. Um, again, you can spend as much time or as little time as you'd like. You can see where you can put little wool bits on it. You can put buttons whatever sorts of things that you'd like. This right here is actually just an old brooch. So it's just pinned on there. Some antique buttons and even something that, I don't know, maybe something off of a child's decoration. Swarovski crystals. You can kind of go with whatever look you'd like. So for this one, we'll continue to hand sew and glue some different things on here. But once you feel like you're done, what you would do is you would then go ahead and come along and trim it out. You have to decide if you want to sew, to cut right on that line or make it a little bit bigger, it doesn't necessarily matter. I usually come out about a quarter of an inch past that line and use this as my sewing line, but it's, it's entirely up to you. And once you've done that, I'm gonna show you on this one. 
So this one, you can see, I actually went quite a bit larger and I probably really shouldn't have because if you look over here, you can see right where I stopped sewing. So you do want to make sure that when you've done that, that you have all of your pieces up to where you need to be because you can see that if I'm just a quarter of an inch in here, I've got something kind of bad going on. So I really do want to stay within the drawing that, that was indicated with the pattern. So once you've done that and you're ready to go, then what will happen is you have to make your decisions on your backing. So for this one, I picked this really cool organic Sherpa. I think this is kind of nice. As a rule, it's a little bit stretchy. So I could put a little bit of stabilizer behind there if I want to, but instead I'm just gonna be kind of careful. So this is my front and my back. This is my lining. The last decision I have to make is on my cuff. So you can see some of the ones that we picked out when we were trying to decide what we thought we might do with the blue one. Still a little undecided. Some, well, that's like way, way, way too busy. So that one would be a no, but I'm always a fan of something with some texture to it. So I know that for this one, we're gonna use this. And again, what this is, this is this little packaged um, fun for cuts and we use this when we're constructing our gnomes but um, it's just right it's just exactly the right size and so I'm going to show you how to cut this because there is a little trick to it if you lay this out and if you put your rotary cutter and your mat right on top what's going to happen is he's going to have a really bad haircut so instead I know that I want to cut this exactly in half and this is 12 inches wide. So I'm going to measure over just using my mat here so that I can see where six inches is. And I'm gonna lay my ruler down. And I'm gonna take a box cutter, any type of a box cutter, preferably semi-sharp, I hope this is. And I'm going to ever so carefully cut along because really all I want to do is I just want to cut through this layer. So once I've cut through that layer, hmm, I started a little gingerly. If you don't have a box cutter, that's the other thing that you can do is just draw a line and see how my scissors were just along the edge of the, I'm gonna show you up close. It's as if you're right in there, Let's, right there. So see, I'm staying away from the nap of that. Because then what I have is I have two pieces where I can sew up here and I have this nice long beard. Here's my other one and I have my nice long beard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this to the top right here, right sides together. Actually, it's gonna be sewn down here, right sides together. So that's going to be the top. And then on the back, I'm gonna do the same thing. Actually sew it on there like that so that I have and what I'll do if I want this to stay out of the way, maybe I should have shown you this, is I will use painter's tape. So I'm gonna lift all of that up and just keep that all out of the way so that when I sew those together, right sides together, I'm sewing right through there so that everything hangs down. I thought maybe I should just show this to you so that you're not confused. So. It's important that all of this is going one way, but here what you're really doing is it's almost like you're combing the hair the wrong way for a moment. And if you feel like you can't keep that out of the way, painter's tape, not masking tape, nothing sticky, will keep everything kind of out of the way. So I've got all of this even underneath here is all pulled up out of the way. And then now I'm going to do right sides together. I 
and I know that that's all out of the way right there. I'm going to go ahead and clip it. I'm going to sew this so you can see what I mean and you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to clip these in place. I'm going to sew that seam right here, just a quarter inch is all you need, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's blue thread, but that way you can see it. So we've sewn this right here, and so then when you open this up, you can see that all you have to do is just brush all that down, and it's exactly the way that it should, the way that it should be. So now the way that you're going to finish your stocking, we're going to line this up like this, and included in your in your pattern, we have all of the directions, but we also have this as a separate free download. It's connected to a video that we did about constructing stockings. You can also find this on our website, but it shows how you're going to lay things out. There's other ways to do it. This is just the way that I find is easiest for me, is I lay out the front of my stocking, the back of my stocking. Of course, they are mirror images to each other. And then I have the lining. So I'm just doing a simple white lining in this. And it has to be the same size. It should be the same size as your stocking and your top and your um, cuff. So I'm going to lay that out right there. Lay this one out right here. And again, so that they look like this. Front back lining, lining. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and sew this to this end right here, right sides together. This one to this end, right sides together. Once I've done that, I'm going to flip this over. Flip that over. And leaving an opening right here, I'm going to backstitch, sew all the way down, all the way around, all the way back, backstitch, and I'm going to turn everything out right through this hole. After I've done that, I can stitch that closed, tuck my lining inside after I've tucked everything out, and I'm all good to go. I've got my stocking, my lining, and if you want to put a hang tag where you're going to put that, typically is going to be right here. So just go ahead and make yourself some sort of a little loop, hanging loop, tuck it in right there, make sure it's staying on the inside, I mean the top side, so that it's inside your seam and you're good to go. Okay, that was our crazy stocking. I hope that that was fun, maybe opened up an opportunity to do a lot of new techniques, some new stitches on your sewing machine, some strange threads, um, maybe some strange embellishments, and maybe even some cool minky for your cuff. So uh, don't overthink it too much, but have a whole lot of fun with it. I'm just going to warn you that these are super addicting, and it's fun to think of different things that you would use to decorate everybody's stocking. So have fun. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.